Masters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman, Dow's at 157 at 33,895 on this Wednesday, the 21st of uh, June. So this is very interesting. Remember, you remember, we were looking at the nine-period exponential moving average. Actually, let me do this. Why not? Because we've got a little time. There's no rush here. This is a very selective market. We've got our peak D and the chaff wave at peak D. Other things can happen. That's usually when you get your uh, – there's a chance of getting your sell-off. Let me go to the chart that says – if I can find blank. There it is. <clears throat> so this is a chart that just has those exponential moving averages. But most importantly – what I wanted to point out is this. In my technique, over the period that I've, I've been really studying this uh, particular technique for a long time, that's the 9 over the 14, 9 under the 14, here's the green. This is the QQQ. Look, it's just touching. Once again, it's touching the 9 period, the green 9 period moving average. And every time it's hit it, it's bounced off that. Is this the time that it fails? But wait a minute. If it does fail... It would have to slide somewhere around here. No, I, I'd even put 349, so 358, at least another 9 to 10 points before that uh, green line changes to pink. Look at this spy. The spy has touched and has actually pierced a little bit so far today, the green 9 period moving average, but it's been there before, and that 9 has not crossed negative. Is this the time? That the, the look what happened before back in April to May, it went so b sharply lower, and yet that green nine period moving average because it uses a look back period, um, nine over the 14, that just did not close red. It went just once over there, it went pink for a day. Look at the Dow, let's go to the diamonds, DIA. Uh, so we, we're out of our, sh our short-term trading position. We are trying to implement some kind of a short position in, the, in one of the indices. We haven't done that yet. Uh, but look at this. It has gone now underneath the 14-period exponential moving average. It's done that many times before. And when the 9 is so far over the 14, it suggests that there is still residual strength unless it's just a cascade lower. Well, at 167 down in the Dow, 27 points in the S&P. So far, the day is young. Powell still has to talk. But so far, it's not it's not really tanking the market. IWM, Russell 2000, much closer, but it still hasn't gone negative. And look how sharply higher the 9 is above the 14. In fact, it's holding a little bit better in a way than the others. So look at gold, just to show you how this works. Gold has been since right there where it crossed and then continued lower. Right there on the 16th of May, gold was at 2041, the continuous contract. Pow, goes down. And it looks like, and there's no there's no support here for a little while. So that's, that's a negative. Look at the dollar, DXY. The dollar is pink. Look how sharply the gray nine period moving average, oops, this is the price, how sharply the price has moved. And yet that stubborn pink nine period moving average just won't get out of it. It just cannot turn green yet. Look at the, um, I want you to do uh, different, I want you to do the volatility index, VIX on X, there it is. Um, Look, it's stuck here. It hasn't been able, even today, it's down 12 ticks. So I just wanted to check this for a moment, if you don't mind. Uh, yeah. So this is a trough G that's being made in the uh, one-minute chart. And all I can say is that as, as far as the this is concerned, and I, it's, it's hard to say, but that sharp move down with the unbalanced volume way down there in the 10-minute E-mini, this is the first opportunity since it went right. I love to look at this. Look at the way the 200-period moving average was resistance. Remember, we've spoken about this for so long. Look, resistance, resistance, resistance. Didn't even get there at that peak D. Resistance, resistance. 
goes to D, goes to E. It just touches it for two bars. Plop, it comes back down, and it's on its way down. So there's a lot of work to be done for the pink 9 period moving average in the 10-minute uh, E-mini. This is a September E-mini. To flip positive, uh, you'd have to get to 4428, and it'll be holding between 4428 and certainly 4434 is the 200 period moving average. Something has to be said later on in the day for this to be really become a sharp move to the upside that's sustainable. But all the, all the technical aspects that I look at suggest that there should be some kind of a rally here. Um, and, this, and this I'll explain what the reason is. Because the 9 is so much higher than the uh, 14 in the daily chart, and the weekly chart still very positive, and the uh, monthly chart is holding very nicely in the Dow. Look at the S&P. I'll go through them now one at a time. I think it's really important, at least for me, I want to be able to do this live so that I, I'm articulating what my thoughts are. Look at the way the 9 is so... We haven't even broken the 9 in the S&P uh, green. This is the green 9 period moving average in the daily chart. Weekly chart is still very strong. And the monthly chart in leg C is very strong. And one of the reasons I've said to subscribers, this is a very uh, specific moment. And we are not going to be afraid to go long anything that looks good. We try to go long um, a stock, a triple digit stock in the building area. That's building kind of um, what's needed in buildings. Um, and uh, we didn't get it yesterday, just missed it. Today we got it, and it's rallied very nicely. Uh, but the day is so young. I mean, I can't, but I'm looking at this because that was at a peak B. A leg B went to a peak B yesterday. I said there should be a C and a D still to come. That's just the way this methodology works. I don't know if that's going to be right. You're not the market. You're only the person that looks at the tentacles and, and tries to interpret them. So I'm interpreting this and saying G says C very often goes to a D as long as the technicals are strong. I don't know what's going to do it. doesn't have to get to 4448.47 in the S&P, but somewhere closer that at least gets to a peak C1, maybe a C2, and then it starts to turn down. But so far... It isn't very bearish action. Very bearish action, as I said in my overview uh, uh, video to subscribers over the weekend, is when you get the futures down 56 to 63 points. It used to be 32 to uh, 28 to 32. Now that's changed. But it used to be heavy down with the, the Dow down 380 to 420. And then the market tries to rally. It, it rallies. It looks like it can do something. And then it fails and it closes at the low of the day. Horrible close. And the next day overnight, just, it, it tries to rally overnight and it fails. In the early morning, it's down 50, 60 in the S&P again, 280, 320 in the Dow. And it tries to rally and closes at the low of the day. That's bearish action. We don't have that right now. We have something that says there is still residual strength. And that's all I'm saying. Residual strength. I, I like to treat residual strength as something that you've got to respect. That's all. You just have to respect it. You, you, don't ignore it. That's all. So what I'm also looking at here. So I had a question about... Uh, Mozam wanted to look at NGL yesterday. I didn't see the email. I don't know why my email is just... So this is holding very well. It's 4.08, up 5 cents. I'll be right back looking at NGL Energy Partners, diversified midstream oil and gas. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. 
TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hey folks, we're back and we're looking at NGL, which is NGL Energy Partners. So it's had a spectacular move. It has done the, both the rectangle and the lopsided gravy cup pattern. I love to give these nicknames. Of course, if I gave it more sophisticated names, it would be in the lexicon, but it won't ever be because nobody talks about the dreaded H or the lopsided gravy cup. Is that a technical term? Give me a break, surely. Okay, so here it is in the monthly chart, trading at 4.09. The, the monthly chart is actually in leg B. I love the action, and this is very interesting because it is diversified midstream oil and gas. Uh, it kind of... It, it 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 really is independent or well, independent energy, right? It's independent of other things. I like it very much. Now I don't. Uh, you didn't say whether you are in, you're long, you're what. I suspect because you've asked about it that you are involved in it. Four oh three was the high that was made <clears throat> back at peak D in early March. Plummets down, it comes down to the two, to almost 240, and then it bounces sharply in a leg A, goes, pulls back, starts another peak A, B, C, D, instant restart E, F. So this could be an F slash B. I don't have to put the B in just right now because uh, other things are going on, and I like it. So what would I do? Um, because it's in an area that I suspect, I don't know, I'm just suspecting. It's in an area that is seeing activity based on oil being steady. Oil is not running sharply. It's not breaking down. It's just been stuck in a range. I like it. Would I buy it right here at 4.07? Being a very low price stock at any point, it can drop uh, 30 cents. Well, 30 cents is like 8%. That's, that's big. So I would do this. If you, are, if you are in it, I'm just going to say I would just hold it. I wouldn't want to do anything. I wouldn't want to um, change my position. The only thing is, would I add? And yes, I would add because this beautiful big cup formation says if it makes a cup and handle, not one of my favorite patterns, but a cup and a handle nevertheless, going to the 14 period moving average between uh, the 397 green nine and the 14 period at 379, if it can make that cup, and then break to the 440s, that would be really important because that would extend leg B if it's this month. And if it's next month, that would that also would extend uh, leg B because B, the high of this month, 
continues into next month. So that's that's what I would do. Now, if you aren't in it, where would I buy it? This is very difficult because look how deep the corrections are. I mean, when you're going from 403, cut almost cut in half, down to 240, well, not quite cut in half, but a really serious decline. Um, I, I think that, um, yeah, I would, <laughs> hmm, that's a tough one. I like it enough to say, yes, I would like to get into it. But at this particular point, at the high over the previous hour, 403, it's trading at 408, and today's low is already four dollars. Yeah, even that, the big moves. Yes, okay. If you aren't in it, I would say because you are looking in this area, you understand obviously understand this area. I would start a position here. I would start a small position. I prefer to say start here, have a split position, and I would add. If you don't get the add on, that's fine. If it goes to leg uh, G slash C over four point. 25 that's fabulous action but if it suddenly if in two days time it's suddenly trading at 388 that's a little too quick for me but at that point i if you're starting a little position here it's between 382 and 373 that's where i would add another position and the whole thing would not be the full position that's all i wanted to be clear about that i would want to keep money available because this looks like it wants to start moving up stronger in the monthly chart. I didn't go to the weekly chart, right? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, the weekly chart with that cup formation usually comes back and tests the left side lip, and it's already done that. Yeah, I, I do like it. That's all I can say. I do like it. N G L is the symbol. Uh, next question is uh, A B Airbnb. A, A B N B. Oh, nice move up. Oh, this is one I kept saying we got to be looking at it to buy. And then I got a little nervous because it seemed to me that this is a peak D with a down arrow. This looks to me like it's a double bottom. Is it a triple bottom? Oh, is this a triple bottom? Okay, we've got the low of 104. No, 103.55 on the 15th of May. 103. 74, that's higher, and 103.74. So that's, okay, that's really good. That's that dreaded H pattern that very often becomes, there you are, that very often becomes, uh, I'm going to put it in here, a beautiful deep cup formation. Look at that. And that says you should still go, if you rally, and you haven't taken out the left side low of the starting point, in this case you have, so if it goes above, the high that was made at peak D of 128.96. This high here was at 129.20. So great. I'm pleased I just did an analysis of this because this is peak A, peak B, peak C. And this is what I'm looking at in many, many stocks, that they still want to go to Ds. And Airbnb in the daily chart wants to go to a, a D. So it's still positive. I like it. But I, I, I read in the Globe, was it today or yesterday, about the uh, rentals? Yeah, I think it was yesterday. About the rentals, that they have a plethora of rentals available at K, on Cape Cod. In fact, some people can't rent. They're busy. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say it aloud. I know it's, it, it's hard to believe. I'm going to say it aloud. They're cutting the prices of the rentals. When last did you hear that from Cape Cod? Huh? Huh? Yeah, how about that? So, in essence, what we're looking at is, um, that's why I got a little cautious about it. Now, I'm still kind of cautious about it, but I like the chart pattern, but I think it's stuck in a range. I wouldn't be surprised if it's kind of stuck between 130 to maybe 131. And even it could hold the the 200-period the moving average support of 115. But I think it's stuck in this range a little bit. When And if it does take out 115, that's a big problem. Uh, talk about 115. Let's just see where we are with that E-mini, which had a beautiful rally, and then it failed. Made an arch pattern. I drew in the arch. I drew in the upside. And this is what I like to do in my if I'm trading or just I'm studying the charts as I did uh, last week whenever I had a chance, um, to see what gives you a two-click session. So far, we, it's a two-click session, but it's so far it's on the downside when the 200-period moving average 
got hit. See how that 200 people moving average yesterday it was at 442. Today it's at 434. It keeps moving lower in the 10 minute chart. So that has said that you have to really get a tremendous move to the upside at this particular point to take out the the right here, the double top at 441850. Uh, 4, 4, yep, hit twice at on the one minute chart at 1016 and 1017. Uh, it's trying. The nine is still holding. This is what I mean about the nine. I would have been very nervous here, but look. It's holding above the the nines over the 14. When that turns negative, and it could at any point, that says, oh, okay, now you got to be careful. At this particular point, it's saying residual strength. There is residual strength. We'll see how that holds. <laughs> I'll be back in a moment. Uh, another question came in. I wrote it down. Uh, AMT. All right, we'll look at AMT when I return. Advanced micro devices. But let's look at the second impact. Basil Chapman, I get it. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So I thought I'd just show this for those of you who do technical analysis. This is the Chapman Wave automated support and resistance levels right here. This is the one minute chart of the SU, uh, the September uh, E mini. S&P. Look, between 40, look how it stopped dead at 44, 18.93. Obviously, uh, the futures don't change in, in uh, pennies, they trade in quarters. But isn't that interesting? And then look what happened. It pulled back 
it ran up to the 4415 area, then it pulled back and held right at the 4411.40, could be uh, 50, right? And 4410.23, should be 25. And then what happens? It held, it held, it held, but there were two levels. That tells me that they have greater authenticity now than the single uh, resistance level of 4415.50. So we're going to see, because if that gets taken out, then the second time we get to 4418, if we can do that, so this is the moment on the one minute chart that it can try for the 4420.50, uh, 200 period exponential moving average. But a lot of work has to be done because look, it has to go, oh, it's just trying, it can't do it, it can't do it. But I'm seeing internal uh, buying pressure come into the market, uh, even though every rally seems to have made a, a higher, a, a lower high and a lower low. Look, you can see it right here. This will be the first time that you're going to see if there's a chance uh, that you can go above this high of 44.18.50. It's a big chance, uh, but if it does it, it starts with egg B. And then the histogram of the 200 period exponential move, the histogram of the MACD starts to improve. It hasn't crossed positive yet, but it does improve. The stochastic is still very weak in the 10-minute chart uh, at 28%. On balance, volume is really nice. That means volume started to pick up. We'll see what happens. Just interesting. It's fascinating watching it go, go by. Um, and um, yes, that uh, 08 level, 06 to 08 level was uh, over there, was a good chance to uh, at least Put, put your foot in the water. So a question came in about advanced micro devices, AMD. A, oh, and the question was for Airbnb, would you add? I'd add on a very short-term basis. I'd treat it purely as a trade, expecting that leg D. And as D comes, I would raise the stop on that and make sure that you don't take a loss on that position. But be ready that anything can happen. The market is becoming overbought. There's no question about it. And some of the some of the areas have already started to pull back. And other areas that have just been sitting there doing very nicely are still holding very well. Question about AMD. AMD is advanced micro devices. Uh, had made a peak E and then a That's why I'm saying... There's a very selective market right now. For instance, I'd be nervous about the semiconductor area um, just on the short-term basis. Why? <clears throat> because look at this. At peak E, around about the 30th, 30th or so of May, you went to this high, just about 130. It pulls back, makes a cup formation, holds the 14-period moving average, and then bounces slightly higher to the 132 area, 132.50-ish. But look. The MACD was a little bit weaker. The stochastic was quite a bit weaker. On balance volume was a little bit uh, stronger, but then made a double top just immediately afterwards, and that was a little bit weaker. And now look how quickly the nine period moving average has moved so close to closing negative under the 14 period moving average. And I've I've kept this. I did work over the weekend. I decided to keep advanced micro devices weekly chart. As a peak F, I could have put an alternate count. I said, there's no reason to. Let's see how it plays out for an F. And if it goes to a G, we can call it G slash C. But I'm beginning to get a little cautious on this whole area, meaning I should also be a little bit cautious on the general market. And that's the way I'm looking at it right now. Monthly chart did go to legs, see a fabulous move up. But in the meantime, back at the ranch, I'm watching this gap get full. Let's see if NVIDIA is going to do that. Question came in. No, NVIDIA is still way up there, uh, down 12 at 40, 426. But the, I'm calling this a peak F. It could be an alternate count. In this particular instance, the technicals have confirmed the rally. And that kind of is important. And I have got this as a leg F in the, in the weekly chart. Made an all-time high yesterday. I mean, was it 440? Um, What was that? Four, uh, four, oh, 429.98. Just missed by pennies, making a round number high. For why is that a 440 over there? And I'm uh, 439. Okay, 439.90. Wow, by 10 cents it missed a round number high. Um, yeah, so this is very select. So if you're looking at, what was I looking at? Pave, which is the, there are, we were expecting a D. 
uh, Global X U.S. Infrastructure Development ETF and Development ETF. I said this has done really well. It's in. A, there's no other way I can count it. I, could, I don't even want to call this a phantom peak right here. I think it's going to go to D. And when this goes to D, I might start to get much, much, much more uh, uh, careful about looking at the market and what's working and what's not working, and then maybe implement, start to implement um, some kind of short position. But the technicals are still really good. Look, a flat stochastic. This is a, an ETF. This is a whole a conglomerate of, oh, it isn't one stock. So all it has to do is to go to 30.49 to start leg D. And look how it's holding the 9 e EMA. And look at the 9 EMA way above the 14, still expanding. The MACD is not quite expanding anymore, but it's still fabulous. And the stochastic's flat at 93%. And that just says to me, yes, you could get nervous, but don't get so nervous that you forget that you've got to look at everything separately. You can't just, as a, a smorgasbord, say, oops, everything uh, looks really bad. They don't all look bad. This looks fabulous. Even though 30.30 .30 was the high back in March of PAVE, P-A-V-E, and the high on, what did I say it was, 30.40 something? 30.48. So it's 18 cents away from the March high, even though it stumbled down to the 28s. Isn't that interesting? All right. Now let's go on. We want to look at uh, we want to look at another question came S W N S W N. So S W N. I used to do a lot of work on this, and then I kind of dropped it. Southwestern Energy. Oh oh oh. So put this together with uh, N G L, and look at this chart. Hmm. Look at the, let's go to the weekly chart. The weekly chart. That's the low. So this is peak A and that's peak B. That's peak A. Whoa 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 whoa. No no ups uh, no up arrow yet. On the weekly chart, just an A and a leg B right there, A and a B. And let's look at the uh, daily. So this starts a brand new buy mode because it made a lower low after that peak D. So there you go, A, B, C, um, that's an A, that's an A, so that's D. Oh, I forgot to put uppercase. <laughs> I'll do that again. Okay. Always uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down. But oh, is time flying or is it just me? Uh, we've got a peak A right there. We've got a peak B right there. We've got a C. That could be an alternate count E if we know we took out the left side. Though. That's a fresh start. And that's there's your D right at the 200 period moving average. It should stall a little bit. I'll be right back talking about SWN. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today 
and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Uh, let's see, the question came in, if natural gas is making a low, is it worth adding to SWN and to an existing position? Hmm. So I have a little trouble with that correlation. I, my thinking was that for certain areas, if natural gas goes down, it's really going to help those with costs that benefit from low, the lower price of gas, of natural gas, for whatever it is. In other words, if they are... <clears throat> Whatever instrumentation they're using for the natural gas transmission, if perhaps um, natural gas comes down, there'll be more usage. I don't know if that's the case, but I, I, I've kind of skipped that because it's beyond anything that I can think of right now. But what I am going to say is this, this cup pattern says there's a lot of resistance here, but it's holding so well. And after D, it's taken two bars and it's kind of resting before peak D, it just plunged, and we've got to be careful. Talking about plunge, let me just show you this real quickly because I, I was going to do that just after the break. Look, these automated resistance and support levels, look how that 44, 17, 35 level was strong resistance. Look how many uh, here we have. Now we have fewer and fewer support levels. So now it's the resistance that says, uh-oh, <laughs> that, that's what you have to pierce. That's going to be really tough to do. This is the E-mini I'm talking about. And it made a, a very quick peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, hold, held off, and then went to a little mini D right there. And that just says consolidation phase unfolding here. If there is a slide under 4410, uh, that just kind of negates this pattern. Says, oh, oh, now you've got to be really careful. In fact, it just it went to 4410, and now it's trying to bounce off a little double bottom there. So this is a – you can see this market is really uh, – it's struggling at this particular point to hold gains and even to get that really strong selling pressure that keeps coming in and coming in for lower lows and lower highs. It did that a little bit this morning, but even then down 22 in the S&P, ah, it does that in, in a blink of an eye these days. So that's really not the uh, uh, that's really not the uh, issue anyway. So um, question came in. I, um, let me just see if this is I can read it. Uh, signed Powell to his prepared remarks. Inflation is still running high, even though it's moderated since the middle of last year. Yeah, I, I think it's they kind of stuck the the Fed. Um, yeah, I agree, and I, I agree. I'm getting yeah. okay. So what we're looking at here within the context of this pattern, look at that. You remember I said the there's the 10 minute chart. Look at that nine period moving average is still so negative. And the 14-period moving average has been pulling back down. So it's going to take a lot to get through that, that resistance. Now that what previous support is coming out at 44.08. We'll see if that's going to be a, a mover for the upside. In the meantime, so I'm jumping around here because these are techniques that I use for everything that we do. Uh, so I just wanted to show you the technique live as it's happening. There we go. Uh, so that's that. 
A question came in about FXI. I think uh, GT had got calls on or discussed calls on the FXI. FXI is the uh, China iShares large cap ETF. It had that peak C. It did have a big spike to peak C. And then what it did is it gave up at the 200 period moving average. How important is the 200 period moving average? Well, have a look at this. Here's the 200 period moving average. Uh, it became fab a resistance, resistance back in December, January. And then, bam, you go all the way up. There's the, the large cap China stocks, ETF. Then it goes to peak F, two doji candles, gaps down, it pulls back. Well, it's always gapping, so that's not the issue. And then it holds for about five sessions, the 200, actually about eight sessions. It goes to the 200 period moving average, and then plop, it goes under it, and then it treats it as resistance. Resistance, resistance, resistance. And it keeps going to a peak C, fails. This time it's gone to a peak C at the 200 period moving average, failed again. I'm a little concerned about this. I think it's kind of, it's stuck in the range. And I always think that stocks that are stuck in a range tend to stay in that range for quite a while. So to, to look at the call side, I'd have to see this trading. Not at 27.51 FXI is a symbol, but I'd like to see it in the next three days. Today's Wednesday. By Friday afternoon, it needs to be up in the 28, 2860 area. Um, okay, NIO, that's NEO, has the same pattern almost as that SW, uh, what we're looking at just now, SWN. <laughs> it's got this cup formation, 1075 was the high. It pulls back, lopsided cup formation, goes to all the way to 10.21 on the 16th of uh, June, pulls back. Holding very nicely. Yeah, that's a little different. <clears throat> I think NIO for a call position, I don't know when the expiration is. But yes, I can see it going to this time. I can see it having a better chance to go to a deal, though it's run out of time for the left side, right side price time match. So, OK, the other thing that I'm looking at here was I, I said I'd do that today. Let me just do that. I, I said I'd do it on the 10 minute chart. Ooh, let me see if I can do that. OK. Here's the 10 minute chart, and the question came in about Apple. So, Apple, um, look at this 200 period moving average, how it held support, 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 and then it bounced, and then it failed, then it bounced again, went in the rectangle formation. There it is. It's been in this rectangle formation for quite some time. Look at that. And then it took it out and went lower. So, Apple's down $1.45 at 163.53. Uh, 183.63. Someone must have had a heart attack there. Trough A, trough B, trough C, trough D, trough E, trough F. The on bounce volume's a little bit overbought, oversold, I'm sorry. So you could get a little bit of a bounce, but only a little bit of a bounce because the MACD is weak, stochastic is very weak at 11%. This is a 10 minute chart. So you see, if you're using the same techniques that I like to use daily chart weekly, it doesn't matter what it is, um, you can. Use the same technique. Look, here's your arch formation. It took out the arch. A long rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. If it rallies and takes out the, pre, the, the high or goes to the high of the rectangle horizontal line and then starts to take out halfway into the wick, uh, so halfway into the rectangle, in this case, let's call it 185.25 and closes under that, be careful because it could quite easily test the low and probably break the low. That's exactly what it's done. So that's the 10-minute chart. Also, I had a question about could I do the same thing if I was going to do it on gold. So gold is now down only 3.6. It went all the way to 1950 just now, 1950 and a half in the continuous contract, 1929.3 it went to. It's at A, leg B. The nine period moving average is just about to cross. If gold today... After whatever happens with the Fed or whatever, it doesn't matter. If gold starts to trade and hold in the 10-minute chart for two 10-minute bars above 1947.25, that 1949.7 200-period exponential moving average, which is only visited a couple of times. The last time was when it, it tried to hold above it. It just, look how it hugged it for all this period of time. From 2 o'clock yesterday, I believe it was, to 8 o'clock today. Today, the uh, 20, 20th. 
uh, 20th was yesterday. And this is not. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN com You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, right, folks. As I wrap up this particular segment and check out my daily newsletter, what we're looking at here is the Dow's down 90 at 33,964. The cards held so far the 14-period uh, exponential moving average. That is really important. Um, it is trying to get above the uh, the price is going trying to get above the green nine period exponential moving average, and that weekly chart has made a leg D in the Chapman wave methodology. We look for peak D's. That's where other thing can happen. We can still go to E, F, and G. D O E is where you got to be a little bit careful, and that's kind of what we're doing right now. Being a little bit careful. Uh, what we wanted to do is I need to just do this for one second. Uh, yeah, so that's going to an E. Now you can see the histogram on the uh, 10 minute is trying to improve. I still think that we've already had a, a couple of decent rally attempts, but we haven't had significant uh, sustaining power. This one should have been, we went right to the 14 period moving average, got repelled. But you can see now you've got this three cluster support level at 44.05 to 44.04. That's got to hold, you've got to break 44.10, the resistance to get back to the 44.16, 44.18 level. I think they're going to see this all day, choppy, choppy, choppy. And I think by the end of the day, if all the sunning pressure has gone off, 
between three o'clock and four o'clock, we could have we could have a decent rally. That's the way I'm looking at it. I don't have to be locked in at that because uh, this is just what I'm looking at technically. Now, here's the other thing. Within the context of the S and the the VIX index, look, the VIX index down again, down 36 cents at 13.52. This is emphatically saying <clears throat> that as an indicator, it only works when it's really working. Otherwise, it's just kind of a flop. That's what I think. So at any point in the next, I'd say even the week, next week, any day that continues the next day with the volatility index above 16.30, that's where we start to see deeper corrections in the market. Until then, I think there's internal strength and residual strength just enough to prop the market up for a little longer. Have a wonderful rest of the day.